they were trapped in the snow and they had to had to eat their people that were dying to survive. And she said, that's got to be terrible. I said, yes, Luke, if you don't hurry up, I'm the bottom of Donald Party of two. If you don't pray for me, the Donald Party of one. <laughs> she said, I'll hurry up, sir. All right. Prayer for Israel. Let's do this together. I'm going to get down here where I can see it. Good. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God, of the God of Jacob, protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Salah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May, may we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God to set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we're going to trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand. O oh Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Again, give the Lord a, a, another hand clap of praise. We thank him for being in the middle of all this. But God still is. God still in control no matter what. That's that we're going to start out kind of slow. We're going to speed it up a little bit afterwards, okay? God is so good to us. Lord. All the time. Oh, yeah. I'm actually been, I'm getting what I can actually see out of these things. That's good. So I'm like a former mayor, but now they got them. I think. Ready? <coughs> Ooh. Let me turn it on here. Let's see. We've got to open it up. There we go. Here we go. Ready? Patrick texted me this morning 
Angie's brother was in a fire last night and lost his life in Blood's Creek. If you're getting the text, the prayer text, you'll see this. Make sure that we pray for Angie's family. It's always horrendous to lose anybody, but especially in that kind of way. It's a very, very, uh, very, very tough situation. Let's remember uh, Angie Baker's family uh, when we pray today. Anyone else? Okay. Barbara needs prayer. She's not feeling very well today. <coughs> Uplifting hands, special needs, lost loved ones, special Lord. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house this morning and amongst our people. And as we join in one mind, one Lord, we ask that your presence will touch each and every situation, supply each and every need according to your riches. Show yourself strong, Lord. Let your people see it. And they may further believe and testify of everything that you have done and are going to do, Lord. And we'll thank you for everything. Be with us this morning in the remainder of this service, Lord God. And anoint us, Lord God. And prepare our hearts to receive the message that you have for us this morning. And Father, anoint the pastor as he delivers your word. Father, we'll thank you for everything that's said. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now everybody stand back up. God is good. Look at somebody tell them, God is good. Look at somebody tell them, God is good. Amen, amen, amen. But get ready to, but get ready to sing a little bit. Y'all ready to get ready to get down for the Lord?
good. Amen. All right, keep, keep, on, keep on standing. We're getting ready to do communion. Come here, Brother Steve. Now, we got it two ways. You can take it this way, or you can have it by contention. So it's up to you. And if you've got a spouse at your house, that, or somebody at your house that didn't get a chance to be here today, please grab one and carry it with you to them so they can receive communion. The Bible said, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread.
And of course, she's not here, so it got me thinking of what in her office, and I saw her favorite joke. And so she has it in her office. So I thought I would uh, do Jeannie's favorite joke today. Are you ready? She has a picture of me. <laughs> no. <laughs>
We know, God, that you're almighty, you're all-powerful, God. We know, God, that you already told us that this was coming. You already know ahead of time, you told us what was coming and what the remedy was. And, Father, you told us, even with all the stuff going around us, they need to stand with Israel. I'm going to protect. Stand. 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 None of you have to stand in your household. Stand for your, stand for your family. Stand for what's going on around us. Father, we thank you that you have not forgotten us. And we know that because you already told us it was coming. And we thank you, God, because on the, on the, the, the knowledge of this coming, you also said that you were coming. And you're going to take us home. And so we thank you for all of this. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name. And church said, Amen. 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 And amen. Y'all can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The future, the is, future ahead. is ahead of us. And nothing. God is with us. And now press right. forward. Press forward. I switched up on you then. Press forward. Press forward. Press forward. You know, then I'm very so good chance to go out. So the light we're going out and, and the lady come up and little waitress and she said, Check, sir. My mom answers, I'd rather have cash. <laughs> Yeah. And so I went like, like this, and Melinda was waiting for him. And I said, all those people over there, they all decided they were going to pitch in and pay for this. And Melinda said, well, you threw a girl's fault. I said, no. Nah. I said, sometimes it's good just to keep things kind of shook up. Amen? So I said, rebuilding your focus. Let's get ready. This is very, 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 very important. There's going to be some slides in here that you did not see last week, along with the five things that we talked about. So there's a lot of new stuff in here too. So get ready. God uses this rebuild mode, rebuild our focus, to draw us out of complacency, to draw us out of collapse. Don't raise your hand, but how many in here would say, I have or I'm in danger of becoming spiritually complacent? Oh, yeah. Or, I, look, I may not be there, but I'm in danger of having a spiritual collapse in my life. Wow. That's some tough stuff. Especially with what's going on around us right now. So it draws us out of complacency and collapse and it draws us out of us freshness. And then we just keep going forward and keep moving. So it's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So rebuilding our focus. When you're rebuilding your focus, of course, our focus should start on God and start on His Word. Because His Word is quick and powerful, uh, meaning that it actually gives life. Those that give life, when God sends out His Word, it does not return void. It comes back to Him and it accomplishes what He sent it forth to do. It has an ability. That God has an ability. Is anything too hard for God? And finally, there's a mission to seek and save. And so, so, so watch this now. This, this is very, 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 very powerful. Distraction. Distraction is any type of activity, any type of action, any type of attitude that consumes you, your time, and your interest to the point that God becomes a word. By the fact that what you're doing is in the front and God's in the rearview mirror, maybe, just maybe, you need to examine yourself and put God in front of put everything else in that rearview mirror or, or figure out what's taking you away from God. So now, they're here. This, watch this now. Be real careful. This, 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 I'm going to sit down for this one. Cause, cause I, this is where we're going to count for just a minute. One of Satan's chief tools is distraction. Did you know that? You're thinking he's coming at you and he's going boom. Or he's coming at you and he's throwing all this stuff. He just wants to distract you. As long as he can distract you, he's got you. If he can distract you, he can prevent you from being all you can be for God. All you got to do is distract you. You're like looking for some, some red devil and a red cake coming up in his pitchfork, you know? No, no, no. God uses distraction. Today, we need to say no to distractions. Amen? And remember, distractions aren't always a sin. 
Is anything that you put ahead of God, anything that you put ahead of God is going to be a distraction. So watch. Satan loves it. Matter of fact, you know, this is one of the greatest tools that Satan uses. Because first it's a subtle tool. A subtle, subtle tool. Because it sneaks up. It is often sticks up so much that it's not even noticed. You know, the Bible says in Genesis uh, 3, 1 through 5, that the serpent, the devil, the serpent, was more subtle than any other creature in the garden. He knows how to get your attention. You know, when you ride by a wreck or you ride somewhere and the people in front of you stop and it's trying to say, come on, come on, come on. But they do something that East North Carolina calls rubbernecking. Do you know, Satan does the same thing to us. Here's Christians. So we need to fight! We're busy rubbernecking. We're not even paying attention to what's going on in front of us. This subtle tool sneaks up. And the Bible says that stay up. Satan himself can decide. Don't be, dece don't be deceived. And don't be a marvel that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So it's a subtle tool. It's also a deceptive tool. Because it makes you feel effective temporarily. Wow. It's a patient tool. It's like a trap waiting to be sprung. One of the chief tools that Satan used in the Old Testament was ambush. God's people were always being ambushed. In the New Testament, when you see it talk about Satan's devices, part of his devices in the Greek is ambush. He takes you when you're not expecting, when you're least expecting, everything's going to hunt you over. And he ambushes you. And before you know it, he's taking the breath out of you. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 13, take the whole armor. Don't just pick which parts you like best. I like the foot. I like my feet covered with the gospel of peace. I like the best thing of righteousness. Well, I don't like that one because that's too bulky. That's too much I got to do. And you just start picking, picking and choosing which parts of the armor. He said, no. Take the whole Armor. Not part of it. You know, remember I told you this a thousand times about when DC was a baby and I kept trying to eat his cereal, he wouldn't eat it. And so I said, I got it. Put bananas in his cereal, mama. But she put bananas in his cereal. I said, just walk away. We come back and all be gone. We come back and I was partially right. The bananas were gone. <laughs> the cereal was still there. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been a banana Christian? Uh-oh. Wow. I mean, the sweet stuff. I don't need the cornflakes. I love them. Take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And a histamine. Stand. <laughs> against the wiles, the subtility, the ambush. Of the Abelos, the liar, the accuser of the brethren, the deceiver. So, it's a basic to him, lady. Will. A liar will lie and wait for days, hungry, waiting as is fallen a lion, a pride of lions. And it's waiting, or not a pride of lions will fall along and follow a herd. And the pride is waiting. Hungry until the herd starts thinning out a little bit. They get a little, they're not anxious anymore because they don't see the lions hiding. And then the young ones wander off, the sick ones wander off, and that pride prounces on an unsuspe unsuspecting victim. So, it's a cooling tool. If it can distract you, it can cool you down. Cool down your fervor. It can keep you down. 
And he can prevent you from getting back up, getting hot, and getting effective. So distractions are very, very powerful tool. So now, let's, let's keep on going. Our focus has a limited the value. Satan wants us to realize that it has potential, it's got power, and it's got position. And it, when we have an undivided focus, wow, what can God do through us and with us? I remember as a football coach, and I always, for some reason, I always I'm getting defense in mind. I always got defense, whether it was in in league ball or whether it was actually school ball. I got it all the time with the defense. And the crazy thing was, the biggest baddest players that look like they can just grab people and throw them out of the way were the ones getting the flags thrown on them. They were the ones that were breaking the tackles when their tackles were broken. And the little itty bitty guys were the ones that would get it done. And I started paying attention and watching. And the big guys, they were just trusting on their size. They didn't even really practice hard. They didn't even try hard. Those young guys, they knew that they were small, and in order to take down those big guys, they would really pay attention. Not only would they pay attention, but when they handled their tackles, they did their tackles just like they were taught. Not these guys just kind of go, hmm, you know, the big old guys, oh, we oh, go. No, these were itty bitty guys that were taking down giants all the time because they did not have an un divided focus. They weren't worried about their self. They weren't distracted. They just wanted to get the job done. And so sometimes we have all these little guys uh, on defense and they're going, ah, these little bitty fellas until they got hit a few times. And they no longer talk about those itty bitty fellas. Amen? So, so here we go. Again, here's the focus. we got to pay attention to what's going on around us. So there was 10 focal points. We're going to do five from last week, and then we're going to do five more. Number one, just always remember this. Number one, when you're feeling like you're being defeated, when you feel like Satan is not throwing 10%, you feel like he's getting 100% thrown at you, and you don't have any percent to come back, remember this, he called you, and it wasn't to get you to this place so he could drop you. Amen? God didn't call you here so that you can become the laughing stock of the whole world being knocked down and dragged out. God's got power. Philippians 1 to 6, I am convinced and sure of this very thing that he who has begun a good work and he will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his coming, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. God's going to keep on working in you. Give him a hand clap. Oh. Number two, God's going to build a church, not us. Oh, we take care of the outward part, yes, but God is building His church. Matthew 16 and 18, and I tell you, you are Peter, the Greek is Petros, a large piece of rock. And upon this rock, Greek, Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church in the gates of hell, the powers of the eternal region. Shall not overpower it, be strong to its detriment, and hold out against it. Amen. Number three. God did not deliver, did not promise to deliver you from the fire, but he did promise to walk with you through it. God never said, you know, look, look, I, I, every time I hear that song, what was her name? Uh, what was that lady's name? She said, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Look, look, God didn't promise us a rose garden. Amen? Amen. We've all been through things. I can look out here and I can think about the battles that some of y'all had to fight or still fighting and the battles I've had to fight and still fighting. But I'm here to tell you something. God never promised there wouldn't be battles for soldiers. You know, a guy, a captain does not become a good captain on smooth seas. A captain becomes a great captain when he's on rough water. God's got something for us. Amen? So look. 
But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Isaiah 43, 1 through 2. Amen. Number four. There's more store for us. Amen. This isn't it. Look at somebody say, this isn't it. This ain't it. God's got more. Look at somebody say, God's got more for you. God's got more for you. Amen. God has got it. Listen, Hebrews 10 and 12, of course, says, break up and follow the ground uh, in you. No word, I'm not going to go back into all that other than follow the ground is ground that has been harvested. And now that it's been harvested, it has become hard. Here's what I'm going to part. Anybody out there, God used you. And that can use you mightily in the harvest. Instead of regaining strength, you become hard. Think about it. God used you. You knew God used you. You knew God used you mightily. But now, as you're waiting for God to reassign, to give you another, another job, instead of getting back into fighting and, and developing, you become hard. Matter of fact, how can you tell you become hard? Well, number one is you don't get a joyful feeling about working for God anymore. Instead of, oh boy, it's on no. Where you couldn't wait to do something for God, now you're going, God, can't you find somebody else? Where some of the tragedies you see used to break your heart, and you would immediately go to prayer. Now you see it and say, God, I'm glad it's not me. No, you know, you got hard and the things are coming your way, and you can make a difference. You say, God, I already have my turn. Send somebody else. You start talking like I just said. You're developing a hard spirit and a hard heart. And God said, you break it up. Not me. You break up your foul ground. So you've been hard. You harvested. You're hard. Now you need to be, listen. Now it needs to be rebroken and replanted, reseeded. And once that hot once that, that foul ground is rebroken and receded, it becomes just as powerful, even more powerful than it was before. And then finally from last week, and then we're, we're going right in. It's going to be so cool. When we obey the voice of God, we are unstoppable. I gotta say that one again. When we obey the voice of God, we become unstoppable. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void without producing any effort or being useless. It shall accomplish that which I please, that which I purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55 and 11. And that was last week. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to go again? Y'all ready for the next five? Remember, this is monumental. This is something that will help you as you're trying to break up that file of ground. This is something that will help you when you're trying to prevent that file of ground from becoming hard. This will be something that the file of ground has become hard and will help you break it up and replant seed and watch a mighty, mighty, mighty harvest. I love that. Be strong, be, be strong, be brave, and stand. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Here you go. We're going to do these and then we'll see these five we're going to we're going we're gonna, to gonna go to the Lord in prayer. Have courage. Be strong. Don't back down or give in to Satan and his plan. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. It says, Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like me. And that almost sounds like you get to be old and quit. But this is King James. Talk. So we can do a little bit of other than King James talk with this. <laughs> Ready? Watch you. Watch you. Be on guard. Remember, Satan's looking for an opportunity to attack. 
Stand fast in the faith. Persevere. Do not deviate in your trust. I trust you, God. Let me tell you something. Remember, you've heard it so many times. When you cannot see His hand, when you cannot see God's hand, you can always trust His heart. Amen. Always. Always. So, here it goes. Here's that famous, famous line, quit you like men. It means to act in a mature manner, not to be tossed. It means to stand. Quit you like men, like men. Not tossed with every wind of doctrine, not tossed with every new fad, not tossed. It means to be strong, trust in Him. And, you know, I love it when I'm talking to one of y'all or talking to other people. I'm talking to them saying, we got this problem going on or we got this going on. I used to love it at Fountain when I did this. I called them engineers and I go, we got this problem going on. And here's what they would say. I love it. They say, say, I'm on it. I'm on it. Talk to y'all. It's been a many times. I talk to y'all and I tell you what's going on and what's happening. And I've heard y'all say it. You text it to me. I've heard it. You say, I'm on it. I love it. So it was it? I'm on it. Three words. But they're powerful. I'm on it. Now find somebody else or but. But you like the end. Be strong. Be strengthened. By God. So, have courage. Be strong. Don't back down. Don't give in to Satan. It's plan. Now, number seven. This you understand is a minute you know we're getting through. God didn't call you because of your greatness. Woo! That might be a surprise to some people. Not here. There's been some guys I know over the years. There you go. They would have had a fit. God didn't call you because of your greatness. He called, look, He calls you because of His greatness. And He's still great even at times when you don't feel you are. Wow. That's powerful. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 chapter, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry and we receive mercy, we faint not. We got what we didn't even deserve. So we're not going to quit. God gave us this ministry that we did not deserve. So we're not going to quit. And verse 7 says, But we had this treasure in earthen vessels, that the ecstasy of the power may be of God and not of us. When you're doing things, right, if, when you're doing things, if everybody's just praising you, When you do things, and God starts, you start praising God, that's where it's at. You'll see me all the time something's going on. And I say, man, that was awesome. I say, praise God, and I point up. Always point up. Always point up. If Fountain Power goes, go, man, that was awesome. Home run, David. Man, that was powerful. We didn't think we'd get it done. I'll do this. Let's point up. Because it was God. Yes, yes, he has to use us. He uses us, but you gotta remember, he's the one that did it through us. Amen. Ask a shepherd boy as he stood over mighty Goliath. Ask a prisoner as he stood as prime minister of the greatest country on earth. Wow. Number eight, get close. Getting out of down in life is a given. Getting up and moving forward is a choice. The problem that you're facing now will not destroy you. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, the Amplified Version. We are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and are not perplexed and unable to find out, find a way out, but not driven to despair. We are per pursued, persecuted, hard driven, but we're not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but never struck out and destroyed. God's got you. Look at somebody say, God's got you. God's got you. 
And guess what? I mean, I, when I was on vacation, you know, we had all how many arm bands, and, and and it was just amazing. I had some just God's got this, and, I, and it was amazing how whatever one I had on, and we got ministering to people, that was the one they needed because I had another one that says God's got this, and either way we win, or either way I win, and so. It didn't matter which one I had on. I didn't, I didn't say, okay, we, I just pick one up, a suitcase, and put it on, go back out. And the person that we might listen to, that was what they needed. They said, it was God doing it, not me. It was God that was very powerful. Said, How'd you know? I didn't. I still don't know. It's God. This problem's not going to destroy you. He made you for a unique, made you unique for a reason. You matter. Look, somebody say you matter. Okay. You have a purpose, a kingdom purpose, that only you can fulfill. Amen? So, number nine. Here's a biggie. Stop comparing yourself to others. You ever do that? God, if I could just sing like this person, if I could just play like this person, if I could just do this like that person, if I could, if I could, if I could, if, 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 but, if, 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 if but. If this ifs and buts were candy and us, we'd have Christmas year round. <laughs> Don't compare yourself to anybody. I've got identical twin brothers. They look so much like their own kids got them mixed up. They're, they're, they're 60 years old. They're 61. And people still get them mixed up. Just like God, I ain't got to, got to be beat up by them anymore. That's why they made me so strong. I always had to fight too. But they look alike, they sound alike, but they're so different. You are unique. God gave you everything you need to carry out the ministry that He wants you to perform. <clears throat> the same God who called and empowered them did the same for you. Just maybe not in the same way. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Psalm 139, 14. For he, was, for he who motivated and fitted Peter and worked effectively through him for the mission to be circumcised, motivated and fitted me and worked through me also to the mission to the Gentiles. That's Paul talking. Paul could have said, why didn't you, do, why didn't you give me what you gave Peter? Or he go, Peter could say, why don't you give me what you gave Paul? No. They both had their mission. And they both fulfilled their mission. This one right here. After you get all the rest of them and hold it, chew on it, digest it, chew on it some more, like, like a cow does its cud, chew on it, digest it, chew on it, digest it. Number 10 is the kicker. Oh, I love this picture. See that? See that man getting back up? I find the word be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against, stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against the mighty powers of the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. You ready? Here's your kicker. Stop praying for protection only. Let us see people and think about it. If all you do is pray for protection, you will never fully engage the enemy. <laughs> if all you do is pray for protection, you're going to find yourself huddled as the enemy comes through. Stop praying for protection, defense only. And start praying for boldness, offense. Stand strong. 
the Bible. Acts 4, 20, 31, the Amplified Version. This is after Peter and the guys had all been threatened by the Sanhedrin. And now, Lord, observe their threats and grant to your bond servants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly. While you stretch out your hand to cure and to perform signs and wonders through the authority by the power of the name of your holy child and servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they continued to speak the word of God with freedom and boldness and courage. DC the other day, he was he'd been working 36 hours, 36 hour shift. And he's working on his BS. I said, he's working on, uh, I said, you're living. You've already got your BS. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, I got one that was honorary, but now I got to get real. <laughs> I got honorary over just being David Linton Jr. <laughs> and he showed me, he let me look, he sent me a, Sent me a, uh, I don't know what you can call it, an address to look up, and it had uh, a video of a group playing a song. And it was a very powerful song, you know, and, and we talked a little bit about it. And I saw, you know, what pops up the next one at the top. And this group was not necessarily a Christian group, but it was Christian influenced. Because I went and looked at several of the songs that were all Christian influenced that I read, saw. And there was one that was very, very powerful. The video was even more powerful because it's talking about bringing down the giant. And I showed the video, but the music's kind of strong, and I'm not sure everybody's face back in here. Anybody ever hear Creed, the group Creed? Okay, this is like Creed, Creed style music called Save and Able, which is got to be some of those Creed guys somewhere. But the video was showing bullies in school, and this little bitty fellow with a slingshot in his back pocket. And that little bitty fellow was going around making everything right that the, that the bullies were doing. At the end, he takes out a slingshot and he holds it on him. But the guy doing the bully, and then the guy backs off. I just want to read the words. Wow. It, it, I said I couldn't have gotten any better time after looking at the I was doing the sermon. I was working on the sermon. I was right there. In the DC. Sentence. I'm going to read it to you. I hit the wall. I got back up and dusted it off. I'm past the pain. I'm taking back all of that. I'm going to kick you off the throne. I'm going to hang your crown upon the wall. Yeah, your glory days are gone, gone, gone. Yeah, I'm bringing down the giant. I won't sit here undecided. When your world comes crashing down, I'll remind you. This is not a chorus. When your world comes crashing down, I'll remind you. I'm the one who's laughing loud in your face. Yeah, yeah, your karma's coming back here to find, to find you. It's going to get a little violent, yes, because I'm bringing down, I'm bringing down the giant. Second verse. Too many lies built up inside you, bound to fall. Standing face to face, you're not so big after all. Take your bow, you've had your shot, looking down while you're on top. But now your glory days are gone, gone, gone. Yes, I'm bringing down the giant. I won't sit here, huh? Decided. <coughs> When your world comes crashing down, I remind you, I'm the one who's laughing loud in your face. Yeah, yeah, your karma's coming back to you to find you. This is going to get a little violent. Yes, because I'm bringing down, I'm bringing down the giant. Wow. I played that song and played that song and played that song and played that song and watched that little guy with his slingshot taking all those school bullies. And it was just so powerful and so powerful. And I thought about that thing and I said, you know what? That should be played in every church in the United States. Because it was so powerful.
You have to keep your focus through the pain to get to those gains. Don't focus on the problems. Don't focus on the pain. And please don't focus on panic. Instead, focus on his problems. Focus on his power. Focus on his peace. <clears throat> Everybody in here has a part to play in God's plan. Everybody in here has a piece of the puzzle. Now I heard a little story one time about the guy was just parked over in the parking lot and he had to notice the Notice the state truck come by when the old big old yellow truck come by. One guy got up and took the postal, postal diggers and dug a big old deep hole. When he got through it, he went and climbed back in the truck and the other guy come out and filled the hole back up. He said, what were they doing? They drove down another 20 foot. The guy got out, postal diggers dug a great old big hole. Went back and sent the truck, another guy come back and filled the hole up. And they did it all the way down the block. The man was baffled. And so when they got down to the end of the block, got back in the truck, he walked, he walked, he rode over to the truck and just said, guys, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah, he said, I've been sitting here for the last hour watching. When you get out, you dig a big old deep hole, climb back in the truck, the other guy gets out of the truck, fills the hole back up, and drive down 10 foot, 10 foot, and 10 foot. When he gets out, digs the hole, the other one covers it up. What are y'all doing? Can I ask? And said, oh, said, uh, we're planting trees, but the guy that does the planting is not here today. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. <coughs> <coughs> Next time you say, when God's putting it in your heart to help somebody, Somebody else will do it. Remember, you're one of those people that's got a piece of that puzzle. And God's got you specifically <coughs> born, specifically made, <coughs> specifically endowed for that piece of puzzle in the right place. You're in close. Brandon, come on up here, bro. This is the same challenge I issued last week. I, I, I couldn't think of anything better. This had to be the same challenge. This week, make a conscious effort to examine your focus. Not only examine your focus, ex uh, expect distractions. Distractions are like, it's going to be. And distractions don't have to be a big bad thing. Any big saint come beat you up as a distraction. <laughs> Just somebody get your mind on what you're doing. That's all it is. Somebody get your mind off what you're doing. <laughs> we sat there and I was I had a reclining chair up and we got two cats in that one cat was nice and sweet, lovable, and that's called gyro because she's always upside down. And gyro's in my in between my legs and up here on the sitting on the recliner chair and she's so sweet and she leaned all back and she go, I love you. And then oatmeal, I didn't even see it. Oatmeal come walking up and said, Jaro ain't standing like right that. And while I look down thinking how sweet Jaro was, all of a sudden a claw comes up. And that cat jumps up and grabs my leg with those claws. Well, it was a good old scratch. And talk about a distraction. I mean, I ain't gonna change my wardrobe about that but distraction. So I have to be Satan bringing a rib cake. What kinds of distractions? Eliminate the unnecessary distractions. There's some distractions you can eliminate. If you're a caregiver, there's distractions in there that you cannot, cannot, cannot fail. In your marriage, in your family, there's distractions that you cannot just throw to the side. You've got to stop and take care of it because that's part of your job. I'm not talking about that. I'm 
talking about the unnecessary distractions. So after you examine your focus and you're expecting distractions and you eliminate the unnecessary distractions, now examine your focus again. And when you examine your focus again, expect God to use you in a better way. As you hone in your focus like never before. Of course, focus is following one course until successful. And it was kind of crazy last week because as I'm working, reading this, I saw a piece of paper hanging out. It had nothing to do with what I was preparing for, just a piece of paper out. So I pulled a piece of paper out and put it out of the way. It says, focus. F. Focus. F stands for fixed. O stands for one thing. C stands for Christ-centered. U stands for untangled. S stands for stretch. Wow. We got the Christmas season coming. I'm going to issue a challenge to the guys right now. So I know guys might not have heard this, but I've already heard this multiple times. And unless the ladies have changed their mind, they want the guys to do Advent this year. Am I still correct? You want the guys to do Advent this year? Did you want the guys? Every hit 
mouth, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've lost my focus. Or I'm losing my focus. I got that foul ground that you're talking about. I was once used mightily by God, but now my heart's gotten hard, my spirit's gotten hard. Things are rough. Instead of drawing closer to God, I feel like I'm drawn draw away from Him. And I need you, God, to help me. And I'm talking to you today, if that's you, but nobody's looking around, right at his body, your eyes closed. But I'm talking to you right now. You got that pile of ground. You've been used by God, but now that heart's gotten hard. But that spirit's gotten hard. Or you've lost that focus because of all things happening around you. Nobody looking around? Here we are closed. We just put that hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. I'm losing that focus. Bless them more. Bless them. Bless them. I'm losing my focus. I need you, God. Too many things have happened around me that's trying to pull me out of this, trying to pull my attention. Help me to keep my focus. There's also those here that you've got, you still got your focus. But Satan's dragging so hard, trying his best to pull you away. To acknowledge you to get you to break that focus. That's why it's so important to examine your focus, expect distractions, eliminate the unnecessary, re-examine that focus, and trust God. If you're here today, and you don't got to feel good, and you got that focus, but you see the enemy trying to distract you, and you see the extra boost, put that hand up. I just need a little boost. I need a little boost. I need a little boost. I need God to do something for me. Follow right now in the name of Jesus. Touch everybody. Raise your hands. Those on that want to do. Ask you right now. I want to minister in a very powerful way that your power be recognized that your name be lifted up. That everything that the saint we use to distract us help us to understand what day it is. So when it comes our way, we can, with power and with authority, push it aside. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Also, if you got somebody home that wants to take communion, Come get one and carry it to him. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray for Barbara. Come on, fellas, we're gonna pray for Barbara.
Glory, glory, glory. We thank you, God. And Lord, all those others that have raised their hand for prayer, touch them right now, God. And we thank you for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. share your love with all those around us. Be with us as we leave here this day. We will go forth in your name. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.